Star Trek Picard, Season 1. Uh, how's it going along for you? We are now two episodes in. Uh, Maps and Legends, let's talk about it. Hello, my name is James and welcome to Mirror Domains. And this is my review for Picard. Season 1, Episode 2, Maps and Legends. Now, you know, guys, that CBS is a real uh, stickler when it comes to using footage and posters and such like that. They like to block as much as they possibly can, so I'm not even going to fool around with it. It's a real bummer, I agree with you, that I can't show you pictures of what I'm talking about, but it's rather uh, easier to, to talk about it and not risk anything like getting flagged or blocked or anything like that. So, that's how it's going to go down with this series, because... <laughs> CBS doesn't like to play ball. Um, the episode opens up with a, a flashback as to what happened on um, the, the planet where uh, they build the ships, uh, Utopia Planitia, and how the droids, or the uh, synthetic humans, turned on the humans and started to kill them all off. I found like that was really creepy, man. Because at one moment they're your friends, and then all of a sudden some kind of uh, mandate gets uh, loaded to them and they just turn like that and it's kind of like it's like Terminator right because I mean these things are they're super strong they're fast and they have no remorse you, if they have a weapon you're done like that and it's just, it was brutal it was very brutal um, and scary. I, I, I felt like I really enjoyed that part uh, and it just gave us you know a little bit more insight as to you know this inciting incident of what I is the backbone of this uh, this series, Picard? Uh, we saw that the droids or like the synthetics had eyes like like Data, and uh, yeah, that was very interesting. I like that part. And then it sort of kind of went like meh, meh, meh for me. And uh, let me explain. You know, the Star Trek series every now and then did have like one or two episodes that would be tied together in one big cohesive story. Obviously now with Picard, they want to use 11 episodes to tell one big story. So, it's a hard thing to do to have each episode be relevant and kind of like, you know, uh, have its own punch when you have this big one 11 episode arc. So, I felt like, well, I'm really just watching the first two hours of this big arc. And I really haven't been able to have that... Uh, feeling of, oh, you got to watch that episode. That episode was really good. It's kind of like, well, this is just part of the bigger piece of the puzzle, right? This is not really something that uh, if I were to say that, hey, you know what? Episode 2 was so cool, you got to watch it again. Uh, I wouldn't. I, I Like, it was interesting to see what was happening, but we're not yet to the big part of the story where I'm kind of like fully invested yet, which is kind of a bummer because I did like the way that uh, the first episode uh, started us off, kind of taking us down memory lane. And now with this, it's just, um, it's singing a little too close to the themes of uh, all good things. You know, uh, Picard now has to go on one last mission and he's an older man now and nobody's going to be paying attention to him or giving him the ability to do it. And he's got to fight to get a ship to go to find uh, Soji, uh, Dodge's sister. And it's it's very reminiscent of that. And we're, it's, it, uh, it's, it's running the line of being a retread to the point where it's kind of like, well, you're not really doing anything new. Now... It is new in the sense that we get to see the future of Starfleet Academy uh, when he goes there to ask for a ship. Uh, he, he goes to who's there? Admiral Clancy, I think. And, uh, you know, obviously they don't like each other and the relations, I guess, are strained with him and Starfleet now. And she basically puts him in his place <laughs> and she drops that huge f-bomb which caught me by surprise guys it did i'll have to l tell you that i wasn't expecting it you could it was telegraphed well uh you knew that she was going to swear once she started to give her reaction to picard's request like just the arrogance of his request that he could just come in and do this and people should just fall in line with him i felt like that stuff was really cool i like that but then the it went on to this other conspiracy theory of the Romulans and, you know, how they have like a secret organization that doesn't like synth synthetics. And that's, I think that's going to be like a red herring. Uh, now, 
we know that it's not, but uh, because it seems like one of the higher up is uh, uh, obviously a commander in this secret organization. And the guy on the board cube is an agent of that organization. And he has uh, <laughs> relations with uh, Soji. Uh, just, it's, it's very curious notes. And normally I would say, yeah, this is very, uh, very interesting stuff. But as I said, it runs that tread of uh, being similar to all good things, something we've seen before. But it's also uh, part of a bigger story arc. And I just want to get to the good stuff. I want to get to the good stuff. This is laying the groundwork for stuff. But I understand it's necessary to do this stuff. But it's just not... It's, it's not to the part where I'm like, yeah, no. Now we're fully invested. Let's go. Let's get into this story. It's still setting up the pieces. And I felt like maybe this stuff could have been condensed a little bit more so we can just get into the main story. I'm still waiting to see Seven. Of course, we hear names like LaForge and stuff like that. And I was like, well, that's that's cool. I'm glad that we're getting at least references of that. Um, uh, you know, Riker and such. And how he doesn't want to go with, to them because then they'll like throw themselves on the sword to help him, right? And he, I, I like that part. Uh, we get that weird visit with uh, him and his doctor from the a Stargazer. Uh, yeah, he basically, he just wanted a medical checkup so he can go into space. And uh, he gets the news that he's got this uh, 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 eromotic syndrome. Is that what it was? Eromotic syndrome, I think it was. Yeah. Uh, he, uh, was it in the last episode of uh, TNG where uh, Picard, uh, Beverly scans him and says there's a small trace of it, but it's not going to amount to anything. And I guess it is amounting to something now, which means that it's his brain is going to slowly degenerate in you know sort of like Alzheimer's kind of thing but he's going to be not be able to tell what's going on so once again there's that theme back to all good things it's kind of like we're we're retreading stuff now and that's fine uh, but I just as I said I really want to get to the good stuff and this just sort of still is building things up and it's not this is not one of the one episodes where I'll be like yeah I need to revisit this one again um, and it's just kind of like it's a very delicate dance, and I, I, I hope number three takes us a big step forward, because if we get another one like this, then I feel like the audience is going to slowly start to wean off of it and go, well, it was cool seeing him back again, but I really don't care what's going on anymore. They need to show us seven. They're dealing with the Borgs in this one. Soji is trying to uh, bring back some of the Borgs from you know, being uh, assimilated. They're trying to bring them back into being uh, somewhat human again. Okay, that stuff is interesting, but we've, we've already seen that before, too. So, uh, you know, I, I'm just curious to see what's happening with that. Um, what's going to be interesting here is is that there is an agent, uh, Rizzo, I think, uh, that gets dispatched to basically follow Picard now and, uh, you know, make sure that he doesn't expose the secret society. And the agent, Rizzo, is played by uh, Peyton List. And I saw her and I was like... Who is that? She looks very familiar. She's very beautiful. Very beautiful, guys. And uh, I'm a fan of the Gotham TV show. She played the latest Poison Ivy on that show. And that's where I recognize her. And she's, you will re you'll know that she's a very striking, very strikingly beautiful woman. And I was kind of like, cool, I'm glad to see her. Uh, this is going to be interesting. I can't wait to see where this goes. And then it just ends. <laughs> she, she goes to talk to that agent on the Borg ship and it's kind of like, well, she uh, uses like a, an, an image, you know, a hologram graphic image of herself to talk to this guy. And it's just like, okay, obviously they're in cahoots. These are the bad guys for this series, for this first season. But uh, let me know if you felt like that too. Uh, I'm still going to watch it all because uh, I'm a big fan of Picard and we know we get to see some more cameos down the line. And I just hope it moves into a more... Uh, a faster pace. Let's get to it, guys. Let's get. Let's show me the story now, uh, and that's the way I felt about it. What did you guys think? Uh, what were the highlights? What were the lowlights for you? What didn't work for you? I still hear a lot of people complaining about the dialogue. I hear people complaining about it being too convoluted, like they can't follow what's going on. And I would admit that there is a there is a lot of. Um, 
nods and Easter eggs for us hardcore fans. I, I'm not a hardcore fan, but I, I have watched the series multiple times. I'm familiar with the movies and everything like that, but I I, I, I couldn't tell you, like, I, I had to really pull Eremotic Syndrome. <laughs> I'm, I'm not, I couldn't show you, tell you all the schematics of the ships or anything like that. I'm not that intense, but I'm fairly uh, knowledgeable about s these things. And uh, I, I'm a big fan of Picard, and I want it to succeed. I really do. I hope it's I hope it's uh, going to be good enough that they've already greenlit the second season. But if the numbers just start going down, then maybe they won't do it. So, guys, we've got to make sure that it gets up there. And if you, uh, yeah, I just hope it gets better from here on in. Uh, all right, yeah, that's it. Let me know what you thought about it in the comments below. And. Uh, that's just it. <laughs> YouTube is recommending a video for you to watch right there. And you can see my latest one just right up here. My name is James, and you're watching Mirror Domains. If you've liked what you've seen, please hit that thumbs up button and subscribe right there. And uh, this is going to be in a playlist for you guys. Check the playlist.